<laughs> right, here we are, firing away on the 35th episode of A Pod Full of Saints for whatever season this is, 23-24, people seem to think. Uh, with myself, David Taver, and nodding Lee Wood. Oh, good evening, David, Jacob. Good evening, everyone. How are we, boys? And uh, we're, we're very well. And uh, uh, Jake Ellicott, <laughs> as you mentioned there, when, when we looked a minute ago, he was green. What, what colour are you now, Jake? <laughs> Yellow and blue through and through, Dave. Hello. Oh, <laughs> love that, yes, Jacob. Very good. good, isn't it? Very good. Very yes. Very good. Yes. Still not going to up his contract. Right. We're looking back. <laughs> need on, it no. We're looking back on a second successive National League self defeat for John Meeks' boys as we uh, oh, comment seventh, seventh place in the table, which is a playoff place. That'd do. No need to go any higher. Uh, two one defeat at Avely. Uh, Parkside, first time we've been to that ground. My God, it was windy. It wasn't even a warm wind. Uh, a bit of rain in the second half as well. Yeah, fascinating game. First half, I thought, yeah, we're in control. We're not really doing an awful lot. Second half, we started strongly. We've got Sean Jeffers' penalty, got the lead. And then Avely, out of nowhere, totally up their game. They did what we couldn't do the previous game, week against Truro. We went a goal down and we just said, all right, you can have the points. We're going home soon. Uh, Avery didn't. They turned around. Two goals in three minutes. And I don't know, on the day, I, it felt as though we were maybe a bit hard done by not getting anything. But when you look back, I thought, oh, we didn't have a lot of real chances. Get a woodwork a couple of times. One of them was off a defender. Um, but two of the chances we had, they were offside, so they don't really count. And um, I think it's, in the end, it's hard to argue against the score. How did you two see it? Well, speaking of warm wind, I'm going to let Jake take the lead on this because oh. I was watching just as a, a infuriating game of football at Wembley. Um, there was, ironically, there's a fellow behind me absolutely coating off some of the England Englander players. Oh, you shouldn't even be in the England team. Mate, they wouldn't even get in the City team, the, the, way, the way that they play. <laughs> so you boys, you, you two can crack on and, uh, you know, delight to the masses about our magnificent defeat at Avery. Go on, Andrew. Uh, Wax lyrically about it. <laughs> to be fair, Dave, I think your summary is fairly accurate. One actually, for once, um, I thought, as you, <laughs> yeah, as you said, I thought first half we edged most of it, didn't we? Really, um, we had most of the ball. Avely struggled to do much, and I thought at the back, even though we didn't cause them a lot of trouble, you know, their centre halves did appear to be struggling quite a bit with the with Sean Jeffers trying to get in behind. He caught them out a few times. And then second half, I say we started well, won that penalty, obviously converted by Sean Jeffers as always. And then we had sort of just a mad, what, five, ten minutes, didn't we? Maybe not mad, but we just had ten minutes there where Avery were just on top and they put away what, you know, their two, you know, really, well, I say really good opportunities. The free kick is not not the greatest, is it? And even the second, MJ gets both hands to it. So maybe should he save those? And then the, I, I thought we rallied all right, and I thought we did have chances. I said those two off the woodwork. And after the game, I came away as well thinking, yeah, I thought we deserved something from that. And I still feel like that now, even what, after watching the highlights. I thought we deserved a point at least based upon ch pure chances alone. Yeah, they, they did score two, well, at the time, seemed pretty much for only two chances up till then. But after that, Michael Johnson, you, you got to query him for the free kick goal, the equaliser, because it wasn't close to the post. He just went to his right and that gave a space for the guy to put the free kick in. Beautifully struck free kick. It was almost like watching Sean Jeffries who did one down the other end, which is why he should be on the free kicks all the time on the edge of the box and not anybody else who has been this season. Um, it was a great save. Um, then the second one, hint of offside, don't know, you can't really tell from the camera angle, he got to, in line too late. But after that, and Michael Johnson made three or four decent saves. Um, they were creating chances. And the last half hour, it was great. It was almost like a cup tie. It was going end to end. Chances were being created, and it was thoroughly enjoyable. And um, oh, oh, I always say, uh, I want to see a good game of football over a City win. And so I left there uh, at this point, not to have got anything out of it, but uh, reflecting on the second half, that was actually quite enjoyable. Um, picking out some players, I thought Ryan Blackman. I thought he was awful against Stevenage, uh, but against Avery, I thought he played really well and. Uh, I was surprised when he went off. I don't know if there was, there's a knock or just protecting him or whatever. I thought he did quite well. Um, but I thought where we struggled, I thought Dom Hutchinson and Jake Berger, I thought they both failed to make a real impact. Um, 
think it's Hutch when it won a penalty. Um, but it didn't really get decent balls in from the flanks. I know they, they've got some big men in the middle, but uh, we could have threatened them a bit more there. And also, I thought around the edge of the box, Jake, we didn't get enough shots in. Yeah, I think those both fair, especially first half when we were so dominant. Dominic Hutchinson down that left hand side, his left. He had space and time, didn't he? Almost every single opportunity. And the ball in every time was really, really poor. I know he won the free kick, uh, sorry, penalty. And I think second half he was slightly better. But you are right. The ball into the box, maybe in recent weeks, I think generally, hasn't been particularly amazing from both sides, actually. And I think that is possibly now we're falling down. And I say probably didn't get enough shots away. But, you know, we hit the hit the woodwork. That was it. Rasulo won off the post. Brilliant effort, wasn't it? So close. But thing for me is Jake Burge has got to score the follow-up, hasn't he? I mean, it's a good bit of defending, but when you look at it, he's got to, he didn't really put his laces through it, did he? He almost tried to place it, and that I think that was almost the moment that went, and also the one off the bar, I say off the defenders. Quite a few of us, when that one came off the D defender onto the bar, most of us said, yeah, this is this is not our afternoon. Um, but I say, it was an entertaining game, there was a lot of opportunity, a lot of space, and I think, looking back on it, I think the Saints will think that was a wasted opportunity in the sense of you know, compare it to other teams we've come up against who have sat back and not allowed us to exploit the space. Avely did. There was opportunity. There was, there was we could make the most of it. And you also wondered, did the substitutions really work, Dave? I didn't. I didn't think they particularly did for me. Apart from probably Zane coming on on the right hand side, but apart from that, they didn't really work for me either. Well, I tell you, what, I don't understand with the substitutions. Ninetieth uh, minute. All right, it was six, seven minutes of added time. Uh, taking mm. Kyron Wiltshire off end to bring on Ben Smith. Now, Ben Smith is a holding player. We want somebody out there in injury time. If you are going to make a substitution that late, someone who's going to create something who can score a goal. Well, well Wiltshire's got a better strike rate than Ben Smith and he's probably created more goals than Ben as well. Um, it just seems the oddest of uh, substitutions. You might as well have left it. Um, smacked of a bit of desperation, which uh, maybe by then it was. But uh, also, um, from where we were by the side, you were closer to the incident. Looks like we should have had a clear penalty when uh, Sean seemed to be shoved in the back close to the goal line. Yeah, yeah, it did look like it at the time. But so often, they just don't get given in, in this level I've found. There's been a few times this season. And I think often with Sean, unfortunately, I think sometimes he... Make, I don't know if referees, referees think because he's such a big imposing figure that he might go down a bit easily. But yeah, I thought that should have been a pen. I think his reputation goes against him. I think if, the longer he can stand on his feet in a game and not go down trying to get an early free kick, he's going to get a referee more on his side. I think at the moment, they're saying, no, he's going down. Um, anything else really grab you from the game, from either side? Um, a great save, wasn't it, for Sean's free kick um, from Jonathan North. Um, but I just wanted to know, Lee, what you made of it, obviously, just from the highlights, what you think of what was you know, another defeat. I spoke to a dad who went to the game and uh, his main gripe at the minute is that we don't seem to win ugly. You know, we're, 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 we're sort of still trying to, you know, when, when we're trailing in a game, uh, the time is against us and we've, we've still got this mentality that it's deemed a failure if we sort of divert from our free-flowing sort of tight angle football. Sometimes he would like to see a bit more urgency, a bit more sort of, you know, directness, if you like. Um, but I mean, he shared your opinions that it was a good game to watch, and 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 there were some positives to sort of take from it. But I think performance is good, and Tavs, this is alluding to you, mate. You know, results are secondary. However, when we're at the time of the season when results are primary, especially when Braintree and Hampson are dropping points around us, that was a game there where we could have really established ourselves in the playoff push, and I think. In the clutch moments, you know, there have been games when we could have been a lot smarter. Um, I'd like to have seen our heartbeat not elevate so much and we're panicking a lot of the time. I think this is where key players come in. And I know we've got this highly fluctuated sort of mentality about how we want to play our football. Absolutely. And that set us in good stead up, up to now. But I think sometimes a little bit of calmness, a little bit of quality as well. And I think we that eluded us from what it sounded like on Saturday. And people can go away thinking it was a good game of football to watch, but it was a massive disappointment. I think in, in, and in the cold light of day, those players will look back at that and they will have massive regrets because that was definitely uh, a game where you threw it away, maybe. 
Right, the free-flowing football. Um, certainly is a lot more flowing now than it was early in the season, where the intent was seen to be just not to lose, not to concede a goal. Um, now we are far more adventurous. Um, corners. We're still wasting so many corners. We were doing it last night in Hartford. Stop this tip-tapping around. The goal's in the middle. Try and get the ball somewhere close to it and, you know, never know. Might bounce off somebody and go in there. These short corners, they are absolute nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Um, so when you are losing... That's one thing you could do to help yourself. And Avery just showed it. It's just showing for a bit more grit. You said about winning ugly. I'm not sure they won ugly, but um, they had the heart, as we mentioned before, which we didn't have the previous week against Truro. When you're behind, you've got to suddenly change your game a bit. And uh, we, at times, don't look capable of doing it. I don't know if that's a fair assessment. I think you it, it probably has to be, doesn't it, at the minute, based upon the last sort of week or so of football. I'm afraid, unfortunately, you know, we've gone, it's, it's funny, isn't it? We've gone from that Maidstone victory in the Western win, which were both for good wins and Maidstone, we did grind it out towards the end. And sure, we've maybe been a little bit lucky up against, you know, holding it on against 10 men, but it was a really well-deserved victory in the same Western Super Mare. And unfortunately, two weeks later now, it, it feels like we've lost ground because we haven't quite had that bit of fight potentially that maybe we did have previously. So, it, it is a shame and as much as it was an enjoyable game like Lee says we're now at that point of the season where it is all about results now and it feels like the last week is we've really lost quite a bit of ground and if the results had gone the other way we could have been in a put ourselves in a really good position but unfortunately we're, we're now we're, we're in a, the area now of letting other clubs into the playoff chase as well thanks to Saturday uh I think it's great. Uh, Avery have come back into it with that win. They played a game more than us. Um, Farnborough on Tuesday night put themselves on level with on points with us, as have Avery. Both played 41 to our 40. Bath have got a game in hand on us, a couple of games in hand on the others. They're losing their way a little bit at the moment, but they're only a point off it as well. I think it's absolutely fascinating to have all these clubs involved in it. It makes it a lot more interesting than just sitting around in mid-table. Yeah, we don't want to be playoff secure with lots of eight <laughs> games to go. Who wants this simplicity? We want we want nail biting drama right down to the very end. That's the tabs I know and love. Brilliant. Well done, mate. <laughs> what did you make of uh, Parkside, Jake? Uh, it's windy. I seem to remember our old ground at Millfield. That was always windy as well. But uh, it was a bit willy, uh, windy there, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, um, it was a bit chilly. Um, quite an interesting setup. Sort of a weird mix of football club and school 3G pitch. That um, so I didn't the massive the dip in the barriers behind the goal um, was an interesting look. And obviously they put in a load of probably temporary terracing to try and make sure they got their ground grading. I think in the last week or so, it looked like they've put in. Um, but you know, horses for courses. I can't imagine that ground in the National League myself next season. But if they go on and win the playoffs, I'm sure a few clubs will have an interesting trip to Avery. It has no train station, so you've got to go elsewhere to try and get your train there. It's fascinating, wasn't it? Because um, they made it a community that day or whatever, because uh, that silly little game that Lee went to. Um, so non Lee had a chance to cash in, and they, they did a, a mega 604 crowd. Um, excellent contingent from St Albans, I thought. Great support. One idiot decided to throw, throw a flare on the pitch and ruin it for everybody else. Uh, a great thing to do on a plastic pitch. Um, but our support on the day was uh, terrific. Yeah, it was. And it's a shame the result wasn't quite there for it. But yeah, really good support. Not the easiest to get to. Um, so really good support. And it's great to see in recent weeks. I think the away crowds have just improved a little bit and maybe making the most out of the home crowds, which have been really, really good. And it's great to see so many young fans as well sort of making their travels away, even if it's just for an international weekend. Because hopefully they, they might get that bug and come back a bit more often to the away games. Well, the trust have really put out of stock now, haven't they? Moved from an SUV up to a minibus now. Yeah, it was your SUV, wasn't it, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, there we go. Uh, we lost the three points. He's timed it up in the table. Um, fascinating. Oh, we didn't even look at the lineup. I don't know if any good in it. Um, right, last night, County Cup action, Hearts Senior Cup semi final, away to Hartford Town. No great surprise that City won. Um, you two weren't there, so uh, this is going to be a rather one-sided conversation with myself. Um, it always is anyway, Tab. So don't don't worry about that, Paddy. <laughs> don't worry about that, mate. You crack on. 
I was hoping you weren't going to pick up on that. Um, the first 10 minutes, Hartford absolutely slaughtered us. Uh, they got a goal, cracking goal. Um, and we thought, hello, we're in a bit of bother here. We're not taking this seriously. And uh, suddenly it changed three minutes later. Uh, somebody whacked one in for us. If I could remember who it was, I'll tell you. Oh, uh, Romeo Akinola. He's third in two games back. And that changed the game. After that, we were so comfortable. Very, very comfortable. Uh, four one up by half time. The result was done and dusted. Um, Hartford, Ben Hurd, as we know, is uh, in charge over there, running it. It's what thirty nine nil, something like that. And there's uh, still a bit of life in the old boy. Still looks fit. Um, and it's great. He's building the club up. They play a certain way. They've been doing it for three or four years, and he brings the kids through, and uh, they hopefully progress year on year. And that seems to be what's happening. Uh, as for us, uh, we had a strong enough side out there. Uh, to do the job, and that is what they did. Um, I don't think you two particularly expected a hard game, do you? Did you? No, not really. I thought when I saw the team, I thought it was another strong lineup, and I thought once I saw that, I thought it was going to be a, 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 a successful evening, and it proved to be. I'm interested to know from you, Dave. Was there anyone that, to you that really stood out last night? Obviously, you've got a Romeo Akinola scoring again, which I think certainly puts him in the front of people's minds again. But otherwise than that, was there anyone else in the team that maybe has been on the fringes of the squad that you thought maybe gave themselves a chance in the next couple of weeks? Uh, He's trying to work out who played. He's trying to to figure out how to pronounce them. (laughs) I don't know any of that lot. Um, no, too busy. Not really. The game was done and dusted by half-time. We were just comfortable all over. A couple of things, though. Uh, oh, it's a spinning mistake there. Callum Tripp, too old. Um, Callum Tripp, 17 years old, MK Dons. Uh, talking to a guy who knows him and uh, really rates him, actually. Uh, thinks he is a very good prospect. Uh, got a good attitude as well. There's a couple of others uh, we've got on loan. Uh, apparently a bit questionable. Um, and, and, and he looked quite useful. He, All right, I know it's Hartford Town. I'm not going to put them down, but it is below the standard we are at. Um, he looks like he might be able to do a job for us in future. I can't remember if I mentioned last week, I had a chat with Harry Wheeler at Western Supermare, and they really rate uh, Benji Mensa. Um, we saw he's a bit more productive last night than I thought he was previous week, and um, maybe there's something there, but they think he's one for the future. Uh, certainly not at the moment. Uh, beyond that, well, George Morrell came in and got a goal. He, I think he scored last time. He went to Hartford as well. It, Mitch again got a goal, missed an absolute sitter just a second before he came off. It decided to let the ball go under his foot instead of sticking it away. Uh, Joe Partington got half a game, so that's good. Bowery got just over half a game. The only concern really was that Ben Smith for injury just before half time. It's yeah, good to be uh, quite a nasty that... back injury. Okay, so if it's a back injury, that could be you don't know how long those could be, do you? Because we saw with Jack James, didn't we? Was it Jack James at Chelmsford that had the back injury? Or was it Sam oh, Brown? We've had, ba- we've had bad backs for years, Jake. And Mitch, obviously, with, with his tree-cutting antics, you know. He's, yes. He, these yes. players just can't be trusted. For the love of God, boys. Just look after yourself, will you? No, uh, no, God. On that, I suppose, no, if there's no Ben Smith Saturday, it might give Callum Tripp that opportunity at least being on the bench for Saturday Good and job. potentially featuring. But... The big one for me last night is Joe Partington. You know, he's been out with suspension and I think we have really missed him the last two games. Sure, we haven't been cut cut apart at the back, but we talked about leadership last pod, didn't we? And I think again at Avely, maybe that last 20 minutes yeah. after we went 2-1 down, thought again, did we lack leaders on that pitch possibly? So I, I would like to see him come back in if he's fit enough and straight back into the team. Are you yeah, too. talking about player of the season, Joe Partington? Yes. Yes, jo- yes, that Joe Partington. Who I, it looks like, based of what the lads are wearing, has appears to have given free Skechers boots to every single member say, of the squad. Joe, size 10. Thanks, buddy. Cheers, mate. <laughs> um, Tavs, I've, we've had a question regarding the County Cups. Um, so thank you to Chris Kessel, who messaged us via our Twitter page and said, as someone who's not in the area, how important do you think the fans feel the County Cups are? As my faraway perspective, it seems like a fun competition and the club have a legitimate chance for success to win every single year. Fun. Do we go to Clarence Park to have fun? You get your ears blasted and this, that and the other. Anyway, uh, our senior cup. Um, well, yeah, supporters actually do love it. Uh, a longer term support. I don't know about the younger kids nowadays, the younger ones coming through. Uh, but 
the older ones. Yes, we do like the Art Senior Cup. Um, it's maybe not treated as seriously as it used to be, just like the FA Cup was watered down. It's a disgrace the way uh, football league clubs treat the FA Cup now, and they shouldn't be allowed to do it. Um, with Stevenage last week, they put out their best under-18 side against us. Uh, if you don't want to be it, you can actually pay £500 of a Hearts FA. And I think it goes to Steve Trulock's holiday fund. And, um, and, and, and you, you can... You can skip out the competition, but uh, we don't. We pay. We pay our proper affiliation uh, fee. What I would yeah, say we, is, we should, we should take it seriously. Yeah. First of all, Steve Trillock does not need five hundred pounds. Um, what I would say after that is, I think some of the younger fans they do value it in so much that it's another chance to see a potential city win, but also. It gives us an insight of some of the some of the fringe players, some of some of the younger players coming in through. It's a it's a really fine balance, and I think the club have got that spot on over the last couple couple of years, maybe. Um, but uh, I don't. I'm not a particular champion for the county cups, but I can see the value. There's more value in it than, than I think people really appreciate because, like like player of the season parts, you know, um, it gives him sort of chance. He's not going to go into the league game cold, is he now, you know, on Saturday? Um, fringe players, you look at Akinola, you know, players who wouldn't normally get, get that chance to shine. Trip, the prime example of that. I think the fans probably love it um, for, 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 for different reasons. Um, and also, it gives us a chance to, to smash Ben Hurd's side 4-1 as well. So that's always, that's always a fantastic with return for any County Cup game. I agree with you, Lee. I think we're doing it right at the moment. We're putting the quite a few first teamers in there um, and, and then supplemented with others who are on the fringe and others we're looking at as well uh, so that side is working well and you'd have thought if agreement comes with another side they're going to put their first team in we'll put our first team in we'll all take it seriously that would be good the, the, the other one the Hearts Charity Cup um, with only a few clubs enter it uh, I, I just wonder if that should be a pre-season competition. Adds a bit of more meaning to uh, some not some pre-season games. Of course, if you get knocked out in that, you've got to quickly uh, arrange a friendly to fill the gaps. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, that no, is a good point because the thing is that that used to be the way, wasn't it? Uh, where we used to sort of play a county cup competition right at the start of the season. Um, but I think, you know, you've got fixture congestions, especially... Our focus is going to be solely on getting into the playoffs. But as I said, Jake, you know, we spoke about this at length, mate. There isn't, especially when our squad isn't massive, you know, there there is an area where you can unite some of the fringe players, integrate them into like that, that first team setup, the younger players. And it really gives them experience that they wouldn't normally have had uh, be in, in, in a position to have. Yeah, absolutely. I think it works really well. And, I think the, the, the point about the other competition is good. I mean, we're still waiting for that to be arranged, aren't we, that final? And we're sort of struggling out of weeks to fit that in <laughs> before the season ends. So, but it, yeah, it is really good. As you both said, I think the younger fans are actually starting to get into it now. I think you've seen the crowds at Crowds Park this season on Tuesday nights. I know a few went on last night as well. And, it, you know, it, it is silverware. It does mean something. Whatever happens this season, especially, if, you know, if we don't make the playoffs or we don't win the playoffs, it's still Ooh. something to come away with. Because it's not a, it's not a competition we actually win as regularly as we probably should do, so it would be good to win, and you know it'd be nice for the fans to have that as well. When was it? Two thousand four, the last time we won it. Only yeah. twenty years ago. Uh, what year? This would be our twenty. This would be our twenty third time, I think. And uh, as his Burkham said, it would be our fourteenth win. Sorry, Burkham. <laughs> Worth mentioning the final is we've got date and everything, haven't we, and location for it. Is that on a website? Good. Website. Yeah, you're going to get news on the website, Lee. Yeah, don't, that's going to happen. Don't start him off, Lee. Um, so the final is um, against Hitchin. Not against Hitchin. No, no it's, it's, no, it's Hitchin. not. Get a grip. You're as bad as a website, Jacob. It's Even at worse. Hitchin um, on Tuesday, the 9th of April uh, against Berkhamsted, isn't it? 7.45 kickoff. Apparently, Hitchin don't have card readers in the ground so that's something for people to think about apparently you might might have to pay in advance if you want right, to they've use they've got telephones so you know <laughs> card readers is a whole nother level and i suppose for any new fans if you can go to hitchin if you've not been to paul talk about his paul it's a great ground it'll be really enjoyable it, it dave doesn't like hitchin for some reason and if you come out in one piece let us know as well 
<laughs> I love hitching as it was, but hasn't all the wooden terracing now gone? I think we were talking about this at the weekend. Apparently yes. it's all gone now, which is rather sad, but it's still still great ground. And also he got rid of all the daffodils they used to have in front of the main stand, which was terrific. So this is Percy Thrower's Flower Hour. Um, they, it's gone, Tabs, because <laughs> it, it, was, it was a death trap, mate. You know, <laughs> the old timers... They were all over the place. It was like the Hunger Games, mate. There was bodies everywhere. It's just absolutely... <laughs> There's a reason why it's gone, mate. It was unsafe. <laughs> Talking of a Hearts Senior Cup final, I don't suppose this will come out, there is an action photo from the original St Albans playing West Hearts Association, uh, 25th of March, 1893, at Cassio Berry Park, in the final of Hearts... Senior Cup, we won 4 1, two goals by uh, Sydney Margaret Stanley and two for Sanford Folly at Pierpoint Moore. Um, it's a good game, 10, Taz. It's a very good game. Um, but that is the earliest known action photo of a football match in Hertfordshire. So, um, although it's not us, it's the original club, so we can claim a bit of fame with that, can't we? Oh. I can see how gripped you are, so we put that over there. <laughs> Well, that's damaged beyond recognition now. <laughs> that's the only photo gone. <laughs> He's supposed to be a club historian, for Christ's sake, looking after these prized artefacts, mate. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, I've got another question, fellas. It's oh, no. it's all been inundated with correspondence this week. So uh, thank you to, to C. Knox. He said, following on from your latest pod chat, are you worried about the running, especially given that Braintree at home is nowhere a given, is never a given? Has he seen us play? No games are given. Well, you know, we're trying to be a little bit more positive on this pod today, Chess. But uh... I think it's great. Oh, all right, let Jay go first. Go on, let Jay go. Oh, oh, thank you very much. I, I am worried in the sense that we've got very tough games coming up. I think we've got a really tough run. I get, but great thing is against it's against teams in and around us, isn't it? I worry about playing Braintree because I never ever enjoy a game against Braintree Town, whether it's home or away. Apart from the one time that Lee sponsored the game down at Braintree and we won, and we enjoyed the merriments of Braintree Town's hospitality. That was a great afternoon. But aside from that, we never seem to play well against them. So I do really worry about that game on Friday. Yeah, we've lost the last four, um, five games without a goal against them. So, obviously, a City win, law of averages, no point in brain three turning up. Um, whatever happens, we're certainly <laughs> going to play better than we did down at Cressing Road early this season. Talk about us not turning up. Um, but anyway, things will be better. Um, and I, I think it's great we're playing them and Slough, two sides that are up there. Um, in a league, you should all be roughly the same. We are. Um, no, not many games are a given. Crikey, even Dover wasn't a given, was it? And uh, having a Waterlooville as much as they're struggling. Um, so, no, not a given. I'm looking forward to two good games over the Easter period, actually. I'm looking forward to them. I'm getting worried that it's going to be perhaps taken out of our hands mm. a little bit because it is so tight around there and, and everyone's got to play everyone else. I'm, I'm, with, I'm with you, Tavs. I mean, let's take Friday. For example, Braintree just seemed to be one of those teams we can never get quite the better of. And I have to say this, and I know <clears throat> I went on record at the time and said this as well, but a reiteration, the game against Braintree was without a doubt one of the most spineless, soulless, characterless uh, performances I've ever seen from a Snorban City team. And I think if nothing else, if nothing else, Friday should be the perfect platform for us to really get a little bit of retribution because not only for for, the, for those that went down to Braintree, because in our playoff push, you know, we've got to beat those around us now. Otherwise, it's going to be extremely difficult anyway. Um, but, right, but we need to learn from our Braintree defeat early on in the season. We know what they're going to bring. It's up to us now to sort of, you know, to counter that. It's going to be a big crowd, I hope, at the, at the park. And hopefully we're playing a different style now. Although Meeksy was there when when David was there as well, but I think there's a bit more a bit more zip to us now, a little bit more fire and guts, and hopefully, hopefully we come out on top because 
Slough on Monday. The games don't get any easier. So we've got to beat what's in front of us. And we've got to step up, step up to the plate and suit up for these battles because it's going to be tough. But if we want to get into the playoffs, boys, we've got to stop winning these games now. What do you think of Braintree, Lee? Uh, Jake? That same person. Yeah, we know it's going to be difficult. But I think we have to... I think whatever happens, we do have to put in the context of compare it to that night back in November, that dark, damp <laughs> night. We have come a long way. I don't think after that game, I don't think any of us ever saw us being in this position where we were still in the hunt and, you know, to some extent still in our own destiny or controlling our own destiny for the playoffs. So when you put it in that context, I think, you know, we have to look forward to the game. And as Lee says, I think it's going to be a massive crowd on, on Friday. I think it's going to be a really good atmosphere, hopefully. And hopefully we can get a bit of revenge. You know, I know Lee would love to get a bit of a revenge against Braintree and the Braintree chairman. Um, it's been a few years since he's been able to. Um, so, yeah, it'll be very good, but it'll be difficult. They've got such a good team. Well, not such a good team, but they've got good players in that team. I mean, just a few weeks ago, they brought in Freddie Sears, who'd been released from Dagenham a couple of weeks ago. They've got Alfie Payne, etc. cetera. Barris Alphantop, they've got a really good team. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be a fight. But if the lads want to prove themselves and give themselves a chance, they've got two games here now coming up where if they play at 100%, you know, they've still got a chance of getting in the playoffs. They recently went 14 games unbeaten and champions elect probably, Yeovil Town, ended that run uh, last weekend. But in fact, they've actually only won two of the last six in the league. So there's a few draws in there. So they're the same as us. So we're going in pretty much on similar form, it could be said. All right, they did have that 14 match unbeaten run in there. Um, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't like to call this one if I was on neutral. Uh, Here it goes, you, if you go by the uh, one earlier in the season, yes, you've got to fancy them. Um, if you go by our last couple of league performances, you probably go by Braintree again. But um, I don't know, down the park, the crowd's going to be massive because uh, most people are either getting in for nothing or just a quid. Uh, so there's going to be loads of people down there. Um, it, it's all set up for a cracking game. It really is. <coughs> I mean, I don't know how we respond to that, Jake. You want us with you, mate? Neither of us get in for free or for it's, a quid. So, um, it's a, I mean, it also sounds like Dave fancied Braintree for the win because he didn't really say anything positive about yeah, us there. So. No. <laughs> <laughs> but to be fair, man, well, I, don't, I don't blame him. I don't blame him because I wouldn't even say they're a good side. I think they're a well drilled side and they're an organised side. Yeah. And I mean, Freddie Sears, he wasn't pulling up any roots at Dagenham. And all right. Lee Arden's probably going to be playing him a few quid, but the only thing that Freddie Sears is going to be look, looking for, mate, is a, is a Donna kebab shop. So um, he'll probably go and score a hat-trick now against us on <laughs> on Friday. So who knows? It's going to be tough. But what I would say is that try and get down to the park because this is this is the business end, the true business end. Bring your singing voices, bring your wallet, because you're going to need both. Um, and hopefully three points at the end of it. Of course, I am scoring their last two games, so Sears is going to get a hat trick now, isn't he? Um, what about this initiative, friends? Everybody under 23 now gets in for a quiz. If you're not under 12, then you're going for free. So you're, you're going to get a huge attendance. There's no doubt about it, unless it's absolutely chucking it down. But it's not a genuine attendance, is it, when you're charging those sort of prices? It's, it's done because we make so much money from the... Um, Outlets, food outlets around the ground. So you can understand why they do it. Fifty percent of our income comes in from these uh, outlets. So you know, I just want people in there, then get them spending money at these places, and uh, the club's laughing. The club is laughing, and I actually congratulate them because the fact is they are making so much money off of the pitch. It's f it's quite a street for them to sort of get that demographic in to utilise the sales. Um, I don't mind it. I think it's an honest attendance. If you pay a quid or you pay £16.50, your attendance still counts. How they market it is, you know, it's great, to be fair, because you just want people in. The atmosphere has been fantastic the last few years in particular, Tavs. And, and the younger elements, they bring some unsavoury bits to the game, but they also bring some absolute class and they bring the noise and, and, and the vibrancy. Um, if they can keep the language under, under control when there's sort of family members around, that's fine. But I think it does add to it. And we're going to need everybody, regardless of whether you're under 23 or under 85. You know, it, it doesn't matter because the fact is, mate, if you're there to support the Saints, that's all good for me. I think your gripe about 
people not paying what they should pay is another argument. But I, but I think the club chooses the way how they market their, their games. And I think that Matt Big has got a lot to, of, to do with this. We spoke earlier on about the County Cup matches. I remember having a infuriating com, uh, conversation with one of the owners when I was part of the media team. He wanted to charge £15, which was our first team match fee, um, to watch a County Cup game against a team which is three leagues below us. And his argument was it's £15 regardless of whether it's first team game in the league or first team game in the County Cup. And I think now it's fi- he's finally mellowed. He's understood the draw that this club can have. And I think that it's marketed well and it's marketed right. And I think that we're now seeing the benefits because... I don't know about you, but I love seeing Clowns Park rocking with two, two and a half thousand people in it. Um, All that's got to happen now is that the team have got to perform on the pitch and then in tandem, the crowd get excited and it makes for a great atmosphere, mate. It really does. Didn't it get true, Um, though? If it's true, though, get the people in there. Like These satellite units, um, one by the corner where the cricket ground is inside the ground, the income from that is massive. It's, it's more than you used to get from the bar, um, apparently. Um, so you can see why they just want people in there. All right, we'll get them in at a lower price. Um, so, so the people who have been coming for years, chucking money in it for years and spending hours in the club for years, don't get treated the same way as these younger ones do. But it, it is just to get the money through these other ways. Yeah, you can perfectly understand why it's done. Um mm. Is it an honest figure? I don't know. Anyway, maybe we're, it is. We're not. We're not exactly the only club that do this sort of stuff, is it? And of I think we should not. be grateful. No. Not that long ago, we had such a rigid pricing structure. As Lee said, there was yeah. nothing yeah. that would ever bend over. And let's be honest, the pricing not so long ago was absolutely ridiculous, wasn't it? And you know, the the, the crowds that season just before COVID weren't exactly amazing, were they? The clubs taken a backtrack. The clubs looked a bit more sensible about it. They've been a bit more flexible. And I think you can't argue that it's worked really well. You know, those suggestions, I think, that a lot of fans had back in 2017, 18, 19 about pricing. They have been implemented by the club and it's working well now. And also younger fans are coming and there's so many more new faces coming. You know, after we're, after we're gone, hopefully they'll still be supporting the club, you know, and backing us and it'll be brilliant. So... So you're gone. All right, Grandpa Ellicott. Bloody hell, where are well, you going then, mate? I was, tra- I was trying to be nice. I'm talking about you two, okay? <laughs> you look older but... than both of us, mate. What are you talking about? <laughs> okay, going on from the website earlier, it was it doesn't promote games, as it should do, rearrange games, so let supporters know that those are there. Um, as other things, me decide at the moment, the interviews, if Matt doesn't do them, they are blooming awful. You barely get a coherent sentence put to John Meeks. John Meeks' answers can be a little bit short, but he's generally pretty good. And with the right person interviewing, you get decent interviews. And uh, we're not getting those at the moment. You look at the match pack, that's, that's a load of nonsense at the moment. The match day Twitter, well, they've given up on it. We don't announce um, last night, no substitutions. The bookings aren't on there. The opposition goal scorers aren't on there. Uh, our Twitter, and a lot of supporters were saying this, is absolutely awful. It's gone right down the pan. And the club's got to address it. And as other little errors creeping in the team sheet is becoming more and more awful, which is unfortunate because that's a simple thing to put right. Um, there's ways the club's got to tighten up a little bit to uh, improve those things. If only they knew of some media trained people who could come and give them a hand on a match day, Dave. Interviewing managers was your forte, my friend. What it, what it does show is. Um, there's a lack of um, volunteers coming in to help a media team we've got there now who have got that little bit of quality to do these things. People can take them on, yeah, but if you don't do it any good, you haven't helped the club at all. And um, it, it, a club could do with some more better quality volunteers coming through on that side of it, which is difficult because they try and give it to youngsters to bring them through and improve them. But um, yeah. we're not just a training ground. Supporters like to see a finished article. I have to say, this is probably an area of expertise for me because obviously I deal with uh, the social media accounts for quite a number of clubs and their promotion and how they market themselves in the week. It's so easy to get it wrong, and it, but it's a little bit harder to get it right. And I think you do need to invest the time and the effort into those, especially with something that's so time sensitive as Twitter and match updates. You need someone who knows what they're doing. You can't just put any any sort of student 
in the, you have to sort of learn this process because the club have now, by their own accounts, got a global media footprint. So you have to make sure whatever you put out is of the highest order. And Jake, we've been to these fans forums and there's like a, you know, a, a, a code of conduct or whatever it is, you know, a, a, a code of visions that the club has. And at the minute, the club's social media is falling short of what is required for a club of our size and how we've grown and developed over the last few years. Um, it, it, it needs work. I don't think it's particularly the people who are doing it. No, they're not doing it on purpose, but I think they need to make sure the club needs to make sure those in charge of hiring these people, they need to make sure that they're capable of doing it to the needs that the supporters actually want. I'm talking to Rich. How did you follow the game last night, Jake? Following it on Twitter last night. Oh, Christ, you had a lot of spare time then in between the uh, tweets then. <laughs> oh, David. Um, we, get some predictions people... going for... <laughs> we haven't even mentioned the Slough game. <laughs> We're yes. playing them on Monday. <laughs> well, yeah, they, of course... Um... Probably out of it. They're seven points behind us. They've got a game in hand. Uh, they need two good results over the weekend, don't they? Um, but, uh, they? They picked up some good results this season. They should should have got something down the park. Come back from 2 0 down to 2 2, then uh, eased up and uh, we took a chance to win it. Um, yeah, that's going to be a fascinating one on the plastic again. Yeah, it's going to be really difficult. They've got an amazing home record, haven't they? They haven't lost in few months at home as far as i understand it's going to be really tricky really really tricky and scott davies you know he's another manager that's come in sort of similar to david noble really got appointed as an interim and he's done a really good job he was a good footballer at this level similar actually to david noble in many ways sort of passing the football round spreading it out for midfield and i think slough play like that at the minute and it's going to be entertain i think it's going to be an entertaining game actually it's going to be really really difficult and you just hope again, these two games, is it more about avoiding defeat or is it more looking for six points? It's it's difficult to put that balance. But like you say, Dave, you say they probably are out of it. But, you know, if the way results go their way on on Saturday and Monday, they could really close that gap up. So it's, there's still quite a few games to say, so I wouldn't rule anything out. So two really tough games. And Slough, again, for anyone that's not been there, it's not, it's not the most glamorous of grounds, is it? It's fair to say. Um, so... It's going to be difficult. It's not bad. Uh, but they are, have, have actually only lost one of the last nine games. But of the mm. last four, they haven't won any of them. Three draws and a defeat to Haven somehow. How do you do? Only show that's almost impossible. Um, so they can blow hot or cold. And they've got a player who does blow hot or cold. And if he's on fire, he's going to make it difficult for us. Johnny Goddard. Oh, I've heard of him. Mm. <laughs> oh, no. Don't do they've it, Johnny, had, please. Had... <laughs> They've also had Andronicus Giorgio this season and, of course, Dom Hutchinson. Okay. And um, they had Manash Sunday before he went to Tamworth a few weeks ago. And they had Jefferson Louis. Oh, goodness me. The names. Let's stop there. Let's stop there. I think you've had... <laughs> <laughs> When you see, uh, you see him playing, that's probably what makes uh, Ben Hurd think, I can keep going for another 10 years here. Yeah? <laughs> All right, like Lee tried to do five minutes ago, should we do some predictions? <laughs> uh, for the brain tree game, I'm going 4 0 City. Oh my god, have some of that fat man, absolutely. Um, I'm gonna go 2 1 Saints. Woo, there he is, there he is. Uh, 0 0. <laughs> Start to Easter, yeah, right, good stuff. Okay, um, Slough, I'm I'm concerned about this game, fellas. If I'm honest, it's got one of those written all over it. We've, I don't know, they're just they're good at they are good at home, but uh, unless we're on it, we can come unstuck, and there's no pressure on them. It's all going to be on, on on us to sort of cement a playoff place or sort of push on or whatever. I I can see us just coming away there with a draw, perhaps maybe one all. Hmm. You've stolen mine. I'm gonna. I'll go two two then. Getting back to the Braintree game. Uh, last time we played Hartford, um, our next league game was against Braintree, which was a nil nil draw. 
So uh, history is on my side. Get down to bookies if you don't believe me. Um, uh, well, Slough, Arbor Park, Plastic. Our record's not too bad on Plastic overall. Mm. Um, Good shout. Ah, uh, 3-2. Again, another 3-2. There we go. Nothing can go wrong. Nothing can yeah. go wrong. Oh, apart from everything. Um, <laughs> on, on, that, on that note, um, unless we have anything else, any other questions, Lee? Anything else, Dave? No. Actually, Dave, before we go, you have a great Sean Jeffers stat about the amount of goals he scored in the last few seasons. Oh, come on, Taz. Give me a stat, mate. Come on. I saw it. Have I? I it. What, what was that? Oh, yeah. He's uh, one goal <laughs> away. I think it's just the one you mean, Jake. He's one league goal away, which obviously comes in the uh, 28th minute. It's coming Friday. Well, I said nil nil. Forget that. Um, it'll be his 25th league goal of the season, his next league goal. Only the third player to th do it three times for us 25 goals in, league goals in the season. And uh, so that would be quite an achievement if he gets there. They'd probably be not back bad. on the bench by then, wouldn't they? I was going to say, it's not bad for a bloke who didn't start playing until December, is it? <laughs> oh, what a little dig. Dig there, Jacob. Oh. <laughs> right. But also, on that note, um, oh, go on. No, oh, also, no, he's got more. See what you started now? Yeah, yeah it's, it's in my, I did a set of notes for the first time in ages this week. You know, it, his, his record when um, Ian Anderson came in, I think he got six goals in Ian's first in, in his first 12 league games under Ian. And under Nobby, I think it was about 12 and 12, and now it's about 13 in 12 in meets his first 12 league games. It's phenomenal whenever we get a new manager. So if, if we tails off a bit, I mean, meets the ought to look over his shoulder a bit. Very me. Not really the foundation for a successful season, though, is it really? <laughs> Just mugging <laughs> no. off the manager. It's not really the positive note we want to tend on either, is it? But it's tabs, <laughs> mate. I mean, that's about as good as we're going to get out of him, though, right? Oh. Cheers, you wanted a stat. I'll give you some stats. Don't blame me. Right, on that note, before we offend anyone else and upset any more of the management team, um, we will say goodbye and we will speak to you again next week. Pod full of Saints on Twitter, email description below if you want to contact us, send us your questions like we received today, and we'll speak to you again next week. Thank you very much, everyone. Come on, you Saints.